All right, my name is Samantha Mirabal. I'm with Melco's application team. And this is our design shop talk that we're trying to hold on a regular basis to help answer questions you might have. So it's pretty much a free for all. We don't really come with an agenda. I know I try to look for questions um, ahead of time. I know if you have questions, you can email them into, I believe it's applications at melco.com, and they'll get them on the list so that we have something to start off with. But hopefully you can all hear me all right. I was going to start just until people join us. Um, I don't see any comments yet, but as soon as you have questions, go ahead and type them in and we'll be able to get to them. So to start off with, I've got a series of questions that I found online earlier um, that people were asking. So one was, when adjusting individual points that are part of a complex fill, is it possible to select multiple points and move them as a group? And yes, it is. So let's go ahead and do that. So when you're working with any fill, I just grabbed this because it's got a lot of points in it. And what you would want to do is you can do it one at a time, of course, which is slow. So if I want to select them, I can hold my control, the control key. Hello, Tammy. I can hold my control key down and I can left click on any of these points as I go. And you'll notice they're all going from that blue color to black. So now I have five points selected and I can left click on any one of them and move them as a unit. All right. So, you know, selecting them one at a time, you can do it that way. But what if you want to just select this entire line of points so that you can scooch them in just a little bit? Well, right over here, you'll have a tool that is called a custom point selection. And how you use it is make sure, first off, You'll see you have to select your element first that you want to modify. Then over here I'm going to click on custom point selection. And I'm just going to draw a circle, left click, hold it down, draw my mouse around. When I'm done drawing a circle I hit enter and notice all those points are now selected. So again I can, oops, I selected the X instead of the points. So let's do it again. All right, I'm going to select those points, hit enter left click and move. So now I can take a big old bite out of my pair or move it around. All right, so that's called custom point selection. Now that works not only on groups of points like this, but what if I want that point, that point, and that point? So I only want three points. I can draw around them and notice now I have three points selected. Again, I can move those all at once. I can hit the delete key and delete them all at once. Um, if I want to put these back, of course, I can use my custom point selection and draw around them, hit enter, left click and move them wherever I need to put it. Okay, so that's moving points. So again, you can do it using that custom point selection. You can hold your control key down and just click on whatever points you want while holding control and that will add them to so now they're selected, so now they move as a group, or delete as a group, or whatever you want to do them as a group. Okay, so that was one question we had. Um, what else? So another was, how do you change the font when you first open Design Shop? It always starts in flame and they don't like it. Which, flame is fun, but I agree, it's kind of dramatic <laughs> for a font. So, always, when you're going to change your base properties, you can do this for anything, not only your font, but any of the properties like so for instance if you're always finding yourself adding pull offset to everything you do well go ahead and change your default so that it works that way so when working with your defaults what you always want to do is start with a blank screen all right so you always come file new that way whatever your current defaults are is going to be what you see i usually just right click on the lettering tool to bring up so the lettering icon, I just put my mouse over it and right click. That brings up the object property box. So from here, you can select whatever font you like. So let's say you want to use Century as your base font. That's the one you use the most. Okay, so you would select that. And, you know, at the same time, if you want to monkey with other settings, go ahead. Change whatever you want your current defaults to be. From there, there's a button right here that says Save Current Settings to Default. So when you click on that, you'll see it brings up a box that says save it for just this current document or for your defaults permanently. And what we want is for our defaults permanently. So we say that. Now, when I start a new file, if I do that same exercise again, you'll see it no longer came up in the military block. Now it shows up in Century because that's what I changed it to. 
So if you have flame or whatever, you can always change that right here, come up, hit save to defaults permanently, and that will be your new default. Okay. Um, we had a, re a refresher on how to use custom point selection. That's kind of what we did in the first one, so I'll skip that. Uh, chain stitch, can you make one? So chain stitches, I'm not sure if everyone's familiar with those, but it's a type of decorative stitch. So yeah, there's a few ways you can get to them. You can do file, new, decorative, come down here, select chain or chain stitch, I forget which. But then you would just draw a line however you want and it will do a chain stitch for you. Okay. Another way you can find that is right here. There's your automatic custom input shape input. If you click on that custom, where is it? Decorative stitches. And right there's the chain stitch. So you can also see all the decoratives. And I have some in here that aren't with this, the software. Um, they're just ones that I've digitized over time. All right. So that allows you to draw a chain stitch in any manner you want. So whether you're um, wanting it to go around a patch, um, so you want it in a circle, let's say, I can use that circle tool, hold my shift key to lock it in a perfect circle, and now I've got a chain stitch. Okay. So again, how I did that, I tend to click fast. I always get asked, wait, what'd you do? So I can come over here. Oops, I broke it. <laughs> All right. So if I click on the walk, change it to decorative, change this to chain. So now I've got a decorative, uh, I think it's chain stitch. There you go. To make a circle down here, I can either make a rectangle or a square, or I can make it a circle. So I'm going to choose on that one, point one, point two. And now I can make it an oval. If I want to make it hold to a circle, I hold the shift key and that locks it to a circle. All right. So shift and then click. That gives me a perfect circle. Okay. There, the last thing that I saw online was, you know, I've got a fill and I want to carve my own shape into it. How do I do it? So I'm going to quick make a fill. So this is a complex fill. I'm just going to grab a square just to keep it simple and draw a shape. So now I've got a pretty basic fill. Um, I don't like the stitch direction running that way, so I'm just going to quick change that. Okay, so there's a bunch of different ways that you can actually carve shapes into this. All right, one would be to select the shape, come over to this thing here, which is insert hole. If you hold that down, you'll see there's other choices. Insert split line. This is where you can literally just draw whatever you want. So I'm just going to scribble. Okay. And when I hit enter, it ends that shape. And you'll see that carved a line into there. So what happens is as this fills going, every time it crosses that line, it adds a needle penetration. So you can add some definition into your fill. All right. Well, I'm going to delete that. And let's say we want to kind of stamp a pattern in there. All right. Well, let's go into patterns. So I'm going to go into object properties. So you can double click on the shape, whatever. And I'm going to go change it to a decorative. All right. So here I can do a decorative pattern like fan apply. And I can actually make that pattern throughout the whole thing. Or if I don't, if I want it fill and I just want to stamp it, I can leave it on fill and then down here under pattern fills, select whatever I want and it'll put that pattern in there. One thing, all of these you can create your own on this. So any of these you can make your own patterns for and stamp your own designs if you will. Like dollar sign is one I did just for grins. So. All I did was type a dollar sign, save it as a pattern, and now I can stamp dollar signs into my fill. All right. One thing that when you're using these pattern fills down here, it's always nice after you select it to change it to a satin stitch type um, because it ends up looking nicer. Now, you'll, if you're messing with it like I did here, you might need to rethink that because some of these have some pretty large stitches in there. But it's a most of the ones that are built into the software look so much nicer when you put them as a satin stitch type. All right.
right? Yeah, and the de decorative stitches are only available in Design Shop Pro Plus. Okay. So to create your own decorative, whether it's to do like I did here, stamp a fill, or to create a trapunto type look, if you will, where instead of like an embossment, so instead of having a fill here, you change the stitch type to a decorative. Decorative, and let's do the fans. It's pretty. Oh, I got this down here. It's not going to know what to do with us two stamps. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Is there any questions we have thus far? I don't see any typed in. All right, so that's what um, I had asked ahead of time, what I had people ask me ahead of time. So if there's any questions that you guys want to go over, just let me know. Type them in. Oh, can you do that with a monogram? Do what? I'm sorry. The pattern? I'm trying to look. Do a pattern fill with a monogram? Is that the question? Sorry. I'm trying to understand. Um, well, let's see. Okay, pattern with a monogram. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, well, S, S, T, M. So, well, I know if it's a fill, then I certainly can, right? So, this is not a very good one. But let's see. So, if I create my own holding the control key to move this up. Control, move that one. I should have selected them both at the same time. Properties, top stitching. Saturn. Let's see if we can add a pattern. Let's do bricks. Will it do it? I don't know. Ha! Look at that. It'll add patterns to your monograms or to your text. That's fun. I've never done that one. So you can add patterns like this. So it's really, it's based on the stitch type. So all these pattern fills are if it's a fill type, right? So you can add patterns to it. Um, I assume this might work. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't do that. Come on. So it looks like the decoratives, while it will do it, you'd have to play with it to get an int a good enough look to it because... Well, that's clearly doing it. I wouldn't want to sew that. <laughs> okay, what other questions do we have? Any? I don't see any typed in yet. Well, we're trying to do these on a pretty regular basis. If you have questions, email them in. Um, the chain stitch one is one that I got um, emailed. It came into the... Um, applications, I believe, and sent out as a possible question. So uh, send them in, ask questions. If you have them, type them in here, and we'll do our best to answer them. If we don't know them, we'll have it for next time. So any other questions before I log off for the afternoon? I don't see any. All right. Oh. Let's see, is it possible to digitize your own fonts to add into Design Shop? For instance, your own handwriting. Absolutely. And I'm pretty sure, I haven't watched it yet, sorry Scott. Um, I'm pretty sure they just did a video on YouTube of that, or on um, one of the Facebook Lives. They just did that whole topic. So let me show you where that is so you have it for later, but then I can kind of show you where. So let's see. Um, I think they're... they're put up on YouTube. Give me one second. Wake up computer. When I want it to go fast, it doesn't want to. There we go. All right. So if you go search for Melco right here, there's that. Um, all I did was search Melco embroidery machine education and training. And then yeah, alphabets and true type fonts. There's another one though. Playlists. Um, 
live sessions. And I don't want to listen to them. It's going to start talking. Oops. So there's that one. Creating lettering. Creating a lettering design. And the other. Oops. Wow, that was special. So there's a few videos there. But here, let me show you. Just go straight there. So be sure to check those out. Um, can I cut a monogram into a solid fill? Yeah, let's do that in just a second. So I'm going to close some of the mess I have open. And let's look at the alphabet editor. All right, so tools, alphabet editor. Now I'll say if you're going to create your own hand, your own fonts, um, I prefer to do them, um, digitize every letter. Ah, there you go. Thank you. Um, you can digitize every letter within one screen and then you would copy let's say the A and come over here to tools alphabet editor you would create a new font with whatever name you want it to be okay after you have that I would say alright for the capital A all I did was type in a capital A and say okay now from here if I already have it digitized I can paste it in here and line it all up but I would digitize whatever letter I want when I'm done, I would do a new letter and do the B. Now I'm on key B, I would do letter B. If I want to go back to A, I can click back on A and edit that. So you literally would do that with every character that you want. Okay, the capital letters, the lowercase letters, all of that, you put them in here one at a time. It's at a one inch height. Okay, so you're digitizing as a, at a one inch height, so you need to keep, keep, keep that in consideration. Um, it's digitized at one inch, but if you're intending to use it at half an inch, you have to think about that sort of thing. Um, but that's how you do it. You literally go through one at a time doing this. It automatically saves it, so you don't have to keep on hitting save every time you um, create a new letter, move over, it'll save it for you. When you're all done, that font will now be available for you to use. Okay, um, it's it can be time consuming to do your own fonts. I mean, think about it. You've got 26 letters, capital plus the lowercase, then all the numbers and all the special characters. And then if you start adding accents and umlauts and all that, it can take quite a bit of time. Um, can I cut a monogram into a solid fill square? Yeah. So if I have a square, there's a there's a bunch of ways to do this. Um, you can take I'm just going to put a letter. Okay, so I've got a letter. So if I want to remove that letter shape, so I want to take this out of the blue box. All right, so you want to select what you're going to subtract from first. Hold your control key, select the second thing. And then right here, you'll see subtract elements. All right, so now I've got that subtracted out. And it looks like it had a little bit to clean up, but it, you can do subtractions that way. So now I've got the shape subtracted directly from the square. And you can do that with whatever you want, any, if you have overlapping, if you draw it in there. Um, if you want to just trace your own hole into it, you can always use the insert hole tool right here. So select your shape, click on insert hole, and then you would draw whatever you want, you know, scribble around and it will delete, add a hole there. Now, let's say you've done that and you go, oh, yeah, that was really bad. I don't like it or it's not what I thought it would look like. Well, select your shape, select the hole and hit the delete key and it will delete it from the shape so you can try again. Okay. There's a question. Can you explain the important things to remember when digitizing? Whoa. Um, when digitizing small lettering and what type of backing to use. So there's last week, I believe I went over um, at the last design shop talk. We spent a lot of time on small lettering. There's a lot of good videos out there. So make sure to take advantage of those. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, under the live sessions, I'll just point them out this is down a, here. Scott, no, I don't want to listen to it. Pause. Um, let's see. I did a link last time but there somewhere down here there's a link and I can post them again to digitizing small lettering right right there so there's a whole 45 minute session on small lettering on the Melco service site there's a document on there if you go to the link for the 
Design Shop Talks right here. Pause, because I'm certainly not listening to myself talk. Um, one of the ones we did last week was on small lettering, so you'll have that there as well. But overall, you know, the main things to remember it, digitizing is make sure you have underlay that usually a center walk of some sort is plenty for small lettering. Um, for backing, it really depends on your project. Cutaways is always going to be what I prefer, um, is some form of cutaway. My favorite, if you, someone just says, what backing should I use? Well, if I'm given no other details, I'll tell you two layers of 3.1. Uh, super, that what's it called? 3.1 ounce, super hefty cutaway. That's by far my favorite stabilizer. Now, it's it's kind of heavy with the two layers, so depending on what you're sewing on, it may, may make more sense to use a layer of performance cut and a layer of 3.1 or something like that. But really, when you're working small, the things really to think about are make sure you have underlay, make sure you have pull offset because it's going to narrow up. Um, make sure you're not trying to stab it a hundred, you know, a thousand times in a small area. So what does that mean practically? It means your densities can't be super high or super low. So you can't tell it to do 200 stitches in a quarter inch area or eighth inch area and expect it to look nice and clean. So you'll want to kind of lighten up on your densities where appropriate, unless you're going down to thin thread, like you're going to a 60 weight thread or a 75 weight thread. Um, and then always, you know, you're always going to have better small lettering results going to a small needle, small thread. Um, there is a question, how does digitizing for hats differ from other digitizing? Well, hats, you always go bottom up, center out. Why is that? Well, you want to go away from things that can't move. You want to sew away from things that can't move. Um, I don't know if you've ever, you know, take something that's hooped, right? And if you push your finger on it, you'll notice the fabric is kind of sliding along, right? And what you want to avoid when you're sewing is sewing, creating that kind of push on the material in a manner that it's shoving to something that can't go anywhere. That's where you're going to start getting the ripples, the puckers and sort of things because it's got nowhere to go. Whereas if you go towards the top of the hat, you know, the top of the hat moves around. So it's not going to be running into the brim of the hat, which is static. It's fixed. It's got cardboard where that brim touches. Um, it's just not going to do anything. Mm -hmm. All right. So you always want to go from bottom to top to sew away from that anchor and center out for the same reason. That center seam that has all the buckram in it, um, it's usually got what buckram, which is the stiffener on hats. It's got um, sometimes bias tape. I've seen some manufacturers start putting a little plastic piece in there. It's just no fun. So you always want to make sure you're sewing center out to, you know, on hats. There is a link that was typed in to the comments that you can refer to that has a lot of good information on digitizing for hats. And I know there's several videos in the live talks that we've done um, that go over all sorts of um, hat type things. Do you know why my machine freezes when I try to address the grid? Adjust the grid? No, I don't. Um, I would have to point you to the tech guys. Um, they're when I go to, you're, I assume you're talking about this grid. So if I turn the grid on, I know, I, I honestly, I don't know. You'd have, I need to see specifics or get it over to the tech guys so that they can look at it for you. Um, that's, there's a comment you might want to check your video card driver. One thing I do know is I prefer to run Design Shop on a gaming laptop or a gaming computer in general because it's got a high-end driver with RAM on the graphics card that helps stop it from free from freezing and getting overloaded. So it runs really smoothly that way. All right, what other questions were there? Did I miss them? Hmm. I don't recall, and it's not showing me any others. What other questions do we have? Any? All right. Well, we're doing this on a weekly basis for y'all, so be sure to send in your questions. Um, you know, send 
email them to applications team. I think it's applications at milka.com. You can, you know, I'll try to ping it on some of the groups every now and then just to get a list of stuff because otherwise I'm going to staring at the screen. <laughs> um, but we'll have um, another one, I believe, next week. I'm not going to be doing next week. Uh, I've got a few weeks that I'm going on vacation, so that'll be fun. But I hope these are helpful for you. Um, you know, we want you to be successful, so just whatever questions you have, please answer. Please ask them, and we'll try to do our best to get an answer for you. All right? You guys have a great afternoon. Unless there's any other, I'll wait a second or two more, see if any other questions pop up. Otherwise, I'll talk to you in a few weeks.